Title, Discover How the Gate of the Exonerated Came to Be. Opening video wide shot of the New York City Public Design Commission vote on the Gate of the Exonerated, December 12th, 2022. Let the record show the vote is unanimously in favor. The project is approved and again, with our thanks for all of your efforts, we greatly appreciate it. Narration text over a black and white map of Central Park. On December 19, 2002, five men, then known as the Central Park Five, had their convictions vacated after being wrongly arrested, convicted, and sentenced in the Central Park Jogger case. The unjust conviction of the five, who were children at the time, was not only unthinkable for the boys and their families, but it had a chilling effect on the entire community and their relationship with Central Park. The gate of the exonerated is a step in the healing process, creating a threshold that is welcoming to all. This is the story of how this gate came to be. Cicely Harris, Chair, Manhattan Community Board 10, speaking with a video aerial shot of Central Park. The motivation to create a commemoration came out of our community board meeting. Whenever we bring up Central Park, there's a lot of talk of what happened, especially for the Harlem community. At that meeting, the community was saying, we need to take advantage of this opportunity for an opportunity of healing, an opportunity of opening a discussion, a vital discussion on social justice, social injustice. John Reddick, Director of Community Engagement Projects, Central Park Conservancy, speaking with video shots of the Harlem Mirror area of Central Park. One of the things the, the community had felt that the, the young people were stigmatized. And so all the joy they had had coming to the park before that incident made people tell their kids don't go in the park. They thought the public saw them in a different way. They didn't feel welcome. And this is a bridge to all exonerated people, not just the five, but other people who feel like they've been wrongly accused. Lane Adonisio, Vice President for Planning, Central Park Conservancy, speaking with additional shots of the Harlem Mirror area of Central Park. And we heard from the community a desire for some form of physical expression in the park that would kind of signify a sense of closure, a sense of healing, and really a welcoming back of the community, many of whom felt that the park no longer belongs to them. Cicely Harris speaking. So it, it was suggested that you know, we do a gate. And looking at the history of gate naming, it is huge that this is happening. Lane Adonisio speaking with photographs of the names of other Central Park gates, Mariner's Gate, Boy's Gate, Girl's Gate, followed by a 19th century map of Central Park highlighting the gates. When the entrances to the park were being named, when the park was being constructed in the 1860s, what the commissioners of the park came up with was the idea that since the park was really designed to be for all of the people, that the gates, the entrances, should be named for everybody. And what they came up with was each of the entrances would be named for a group of people that they intended to be all-inclusive. And everybody who came to the park would find at least one entrance that included them. John Reddick speaking with a contemporary photograph of the exonerated five. The Harlem elect officials thought that was a good idea. We canvassed all the five exonerated young men. They thought it was a supportive idea and we took it to the mayor's office and moved it forward. Cicely Harris speaking. So the park is still living and breathing and, and changing to, with current society. So we have the gate of the exonerated. John Reddick speaking with video shots of Central Park's mall and Bethesda Terrace. This is like 150 years plus since the park was built. And this is a gesture that goes back to Olmsted, the original thinking of the park. And so for me, I find it has a lot of layered meanings. It becomes a very significant gesture. Lane Adonisio speaking with video shots of Central Park's Harlem Mirror area. It connects this commemorative gesture to the history of the park and to the history of how and why the gates were named to communicate to the people of the city that the park belongs to them and to welcome the people of the city into the park. Cicely Harris speaking with a video aerial shot of Central Park in the fall. 
the world knows about Central Park. So to have this there as this gateway to and from Harlem is huge. One of the things that we learned in the pandemic is that you cannot just lean on your insular group, that we need to come together as a society. John Reddick speaking with summer and fall video shots of Central Park. If you look at the Gate of the Exonerated, it really has engaged all aspects of the community, not only the victims of that period and their loss and sense of sort of recapturing their life, but I think it binds us all together, whether you're a park user, a resident of Harlem, or someone just reading about about this gesture in a broader way. It speaks to tying the knot, bringing all those different aspects together in a sort of thoughtful and meaningful way. Cicely Harris speaking with an image of an architectural rendering of the Gate of the Exonerated, followed by photos of Central Park employees carving the Gate of the Exonerated stones. So the Gate of the Exonerated is definitely, I think, the manifestation of healing and hope. When you see the words exonerated, you know that there has been a change, that there has been an injustice done, but there's the hope of a new life, a hope of a new beginning, and the feeling of being healed from whatever harms in your past, and that is moving into a new life. So hopefully that's what people will feel and see when they go through the gate. A wide video shot of the crowd gathered for the dedication ceremony for the Gate of the Exonerated. Cordell Clear, New York State Senator, speaking. Greetings, welcome, hello. Kevin Richardson, Exonerated Five, speaking. Gate of the Exonerated. Yes, yes. This for everybody. Raymond Santana, Exonerated Five, speaking. So today, is the first day that I really enter into the park and I bring my daughter with me. Youssef Salam, Exonerated Five, speaking. And instead of a social death, we was able to emerge like the phoenix from the ashes. Eric Adams, Mayor, City of New York, speaking. The Exonerated Five is the American black boy man story. Betsy Smith, President and CEO, Central Park Conservancy, speaking. Naming this entrance the Gate of the Exonerated is historic. No gate has been named in Central Park since the original names were given in 1862. It's amazing, amazing. Cicely Harris, Chair, Manhattan Community Board 10, speaking. This park has many gates that tell the different stories of all New Yorkers, but now it has the gate of the exonerated. Video wide shot of the attending exonerated five revealing the gate of the exonerated. Text over a black and white map of Central Park. The Central Park Conservancy's preservation team was responsible for creating the new Gate of the Exonerated on the perimeter of the park. Here is the story. John Harrigan, Director of Central Park Infrastructure, Central Park Conservancy, speaking. My background in training is in sculpture, art restoration, and masonry. Video shots of Central Park employees working with the stones to create the Gate of the Exonerated. The people that will be doing the chiseling are the preservation technicians and myself. All of us will have a little bit of a part in doing some of the work. And the new name will be inscribed in a manner that replicates the other gates throughout the park. The stone will be debossed and honed flat to receive the inscription, leaving behind a one-inch frame with in-kind tooling. And then we'll be using a template to transfer the font and layout using an air scribe to etch into the stone. And then following that, we'll be carving into the stone using pneumatic chisels and hand chisels and rasps and files to finish up the work. What makes this project special is it's not very often that you get to insert something into the park that's new and permanent. And 
uh, something that's going to mean so much to the entire community. Central Park Conservancy, centralparknyc.org.